California has banned so-called large capacity magazines and that law is being challenged in Duncan versus Bonta, major lawsuit involving the Second Amendment out in California. I've looked at California's brief. There's a lot of nonsense in their brief. It should fail. I want to talk specifically, though, about how I think California is playing games, in my opinion, with the standard of review dealing with what exactly is a protected arm under the right of the people to keep and bear arms. Stay tuned. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Box of Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and yes, indeed, New York Times best-selling author. If you have not subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner Second Amendment channel, please do so and show your love for the right to keep and bear arms. And please help us. We're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers as fast as possible. That will make a big difference to us in terms of the algorithm and spreading the word. All right, folks. So I've taken a look at the dozens and dozens and dozens of pages of California submission in the Duncan versus Bonta case, which is a challenge involving California's ban on standard capacity magazines. Uh, they call them large capacity magazines. Obviously, that's a propaganda term and not true. Nevertheless, that's where we are. One of the, the one point, there's a ton of stuff I can say about this California brief. I could probably talk for an entire day on it in extreme detail, but I won't bore you to death with that by doing that. Uh, I will point out an, another argument I think is absurd by California. Now, what California is trying to do and I should note, I've noticed this somewhere else because I, I listened to part of the argument in the Bianchi case uh, in the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. In It was argued in Virginia involving Maryland's assault weapon ban, which is sort of similar issues here as to uh, whether you ban magazines or whether you ban, ban uh, you know, semi-automatic rifles. You're dealing with an arms ban. Remember, the Second Amendment protects the right of the people to keep and bear arms. Uh, semi-automatic rifles are obviously arms. And large capacity magazines or standard capacity magazines are obviously arms as well, just like ammunition is an, sort of an essential component of firearms. But we won't get into that in, in this particular video right now. Uh, the point is these are protected arms. But what's interesting is that the anti-gunners in California are arguing in the Duncan versus Monta case that magazines are not are not protected arms, and they say that the reason why they're not entitled to Second Amendment protection is because, quote, they are not commonly used for self-defense. Critical, critical language. I'm going to show you why. Again, California says that these magazines that hold more than 10 rounds of ammunition are not protected under the Second Amendment. They're not protected arms. And why not? Because, quote, they are not commonly used for self-defense. Now, there's a couple key words here. They're not commonly used, used for self-defense. Okay, so what California is trying to do, it's not going to work because I think the judges in California can read. They're trying to narrow the standard of what is protected because the standard as to what is a protected arm are arms that are commonly possessed for lawful purposes, such as, but not limited to, self-defense. But you see what California has done here is they're arguing that magazines are not protected because they're not commonly used for self-defense. So they play games with the word used, in my view, and they play games with the word self-defense because arms, including magazines and semi-automatic firearms, handguns and rifles, they can be commonly possessed for reasons other than self-defense, but they can be possessed for self-defense. So basically, as best I could tell from what the anti-gun movement is making, the arguments made by Maryland and the Bianchi case, the arguments appear, apparently being made by California in Duncan versus Bond uh, involving the magazines, is they want the plaintiffs that support the Second Amendment to somehow prove that these assault weapons or these AR-15 style firearms in Maryland and then the magazines in California are actually used for self-defense, which, by the way, they are. But set that issue aside. That's not what has to be proven under the law. You see, the mere possession of an arm is use. That's why when a police officer walks down the street with a gun in the holster, he's using the gun for self-defense.
He is using the gun just by possessing it. When you go to bed and there's a gun on your nightstand and you're not touching it, you're still using the gun for self-defense. No different than how you use a fire extinguisher that's in the corner of your, of your office in case of a fire. Just like you use your life insurance or you use your fire insurance or home insurance every single day you drive a car or you live in a house. You're using it even if you don't have claims. Even if the incident, the rare instance you might actually need to deploy it, never pops up. You're still using it and getting the benefit of the fire extinguisher. You're still getting the benefit of the insurance. You're still getting the benefit of the firearm. Now, don't just take my word for it. Let's turn to the record. Let's turn to some organization or entity that might know a little bit about this. It might have something to say about what is the right of the people to keep and bear arms. Oh, that would be hmm, the United States Supreme Court. Let us look at some of the language that the U.S. Supreme Court has used in Second Amendment cases. Tell me if this speaks to having to demonstrate that you pull a trigger or that you use a magazine to shoot someone for self-defense in order to use or possess a commonly owned arm. Let me give you some of the language from Heller, 2008. Heller says that, and they talk about how, remember, the, way, the reason why common use is a relevant test for the Second Amendment protection is that at the time of our founding, ordinary Americans would use the firearms they had in their homes or on the farms that they actually had for their own personal person pur purposes. They would bring those arms, those that ammunition, that gunpowder, those rifles, whatever it was, those arms they commonly own to militia musters. So because there's this interplay between what you commonly own and commonly possessed at the time of the founding and what these people would bring to militia services, you know, that's why the Supreme Court set the standard up that firearms that are commonly possessed by ordinary Americans today, by the way. You're not limited to owning 18th century muskets. That's clearly not the case. The Supreme Court has said that repeatedly. That's actually frivolous to make that argument, according to the Supreme Court. But the idea is that commonly owned firearms, commonly owned arms, which today would be handguns, pistols, semi-automatic pistols, uh, magazines, uh, semi-automatic rifles, lever action rifles, etc., etc., shotguns. These are commonly owned by Americans for lawful purposes. Now, that's the key. Now, I want to tell you, you don't how the anti-gunners in California or the state of California is arguing that you have to show common use for self-defense. Let me read the language out of Heller. Heller said, first of all, as to the types of guns, they said that ordinarily when called for militia service, able-bodied men... I'm paraphrasing here, were expected to appear bearing arms supplied by themselves and of the kind in common use at the time. So that's where the Supreme Court gets the language. That's the Supreme Court saying that you would bring guns supplied by yourself and of the kind that was used, commonly used at the time. Okay? So in some ways, just to satisfy your militia duty, you had to possess firearms. You didn't have to pull the trigger. You had to have them, though. Now let's continue on. The Supreme Court in Heller says that the traditional militia was formed from a pool of men bringing arms, quote, it's from the Supreme Court, in common use at the time for lawful purposes like self-defense. You hear what I just said? Mission critical, California. The Supreme Court in Heller says, the traditional militia was formed from a pool of men bringing arms in common use at the time for lawful purposes like self-defense. What does that like self-defense mean? It means that it's that the only lawful purpose is not just self-defense, that there can be other lawful purposes, which of course there were because the Supreme Court in Heller references hunting. We know they were used for civic matters such as trying to thwart tyranny in addition to private self-defense and so on and so on. So the idea is obviously that you don't have to just show a purpose of self-defense that's actually used in self-defense. You can just possess it for the purposes of self-defense, but you never actually have to use it, obviously, because keep in mind that the Second Amendment is one of these rights that may rarely need to be deployed fully because we know from studies of self-defense that a lot of times people can just brandish a firearm or display a firearm or, or say they have a firearm and that's enough to discourage the threat. That's not just any random hypothetical thing you may read in the newspaper. It's actually occurred in a United States Supreme Court case of Caetano versus Massachusetts. Remember, Caetano was the case involving stun guns. In 2016, Jamie Caetano uh, 
basically threatened a boyfriend she accused of stalking her and threatening her. She threatened to taser him with a stun gun. And eventually she was arrested and, and convicted of violating Massachusetts law because she possessed an illegal stun gun. That case went up to the United States Supreme Court and it was basically her conviction was ultimately thanks in part, large part to the U.S. Supreme Court and the lower courts following those uh, directives from the U.S. Supreme Court, her conviction was overthrown and overturned because stun guns are protected arms, even though there's only 200,000 of them in America, in contrast to the hundreds of millions of magazines that hold more than 10 rounds and the tens of millions of AR-15 semi-automatic rifles that exist in the United States. So the bottom line is this. Catano teaches that using a firearm or an arm protected by the Second Amendment does not require that you pull the trigger on the taser because Jamie Caetano did not do that in her case and yet it was a protected arm um, and most people never have to pull that trigger thank God because it's a rare event but you're still using the gun for self-defense you're still possessing the gun for lawful purposes not just you don't have to just it's not just self-defense but any lawful purposes including but not limited to self-defense not my language that's that's out of the Supreme Court that's how I read Supreme Court uh, decision in Heller now what what I also want to read from Heller, because this is important. Because again, the 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 states, the people that support gun control, are trying to say that it's bare that the the, the pro Second Amendment movement has to show that people actually physically are, as I interpret what they're saying, that you have to that they have to be demonstrated that people use magazines with more than ten rounds to pull the trigger, and they need to actually use all those rounds to use those arms to satisfy the common use test under the second amendment. But that's not okay. That's not the case because it's the preparation. It's anticipation. It's the possibility that you might need it allows you to use it. Let me continue on the United uh, in the United States Supreme court in Heller. Another critical thing. This is what the Supreme court said. I'm quoting directly talking about the operative clause, the right of the people to keep and bear arms. The Supreme court wrote, putting all of these textual elements together, we, the Supreme court, find that they guarantee the individual right to possess and carry weapons in case of confrontation, close quote. That is what the Supreme Court says. So here you got California arguing that, that hey, the uh, 2A plaintiffs, they can't show use with these magazines in self-defense. But again, you don't have to actually show that anyone's using these things, you just have to show they possess them for the purposes of that are lawful because the Supreme Court says in Heller, um, we find that they guarantee the individual right to possess, not use possess, not use possess, the individual right to possess and carry weapons in case of confrontation. In case of confrontation, in anticipation, it may never come, but you still get to carry a firearm and have a firearm. You get to possess the firearm and carry the weapon in case, if possibly, you have to use it for confrontation. As opposed to what California is trying to argue in Duncan versus Bono, that you got to have it and you got to demonstrate use for self-defense. No, you don't have to use, you don't have to prove that at all. You don't have to prove that at all. Not on my interpretation, under the Supreme Court, right? And what else does the Supreme Court say? Again, in Heller, this is a quote from Heller. They say that the District of Columbia's ban on handgun possession in the home violates the Second Amendment. As does, and here's what's key, as does its prohibition against rendering any lawful firearm in the home operable for the purpose of immediate self-defense. They are saying, by the way, what happened in Heller was there was a trigger lock requirement that said that if you had a gun in the home, you had to lock it up with a trigger lock. Well, the Supreme Court in Heller specifically says that's unconstitutional. Because why? The Heller case says that you have a right to have a gun in the home um, and, they, and the government cannot render any firearm inoperable because you may need it for the, quote, purpose of immediate self-defense. That's the Supreme Court's language, for the purpose of immediate self-defense. Well, the only way you could possibly be ready for the purpose of self-defense is if you have the gun and you're just using it. That's the point. Having the gun, possessing the gun in and of itself is using it for, among other things, self-defense. You don't have to pull the trigger, California. You don't have to show that people, you know, empty 30 rounds into someone. To, they don't have to do. You just have to be ready for it. That's all the Supreme Court requires. Now, I also want to point out some other powerful language from Caetano, 2016 Supreme Court. Guess what? Just tell me if this is interesting in terms of magazines. Tell me if this is interesting, because I think it's very telling that magazines are clearly protected. Magazines that have more than 10 rounds are clearly protected. Here's what Justice Alito wrote in a concurrence in Caetano. 
Now he's talking about stun guns, but then he talks about semi-automatic pistols. This is what Justice Alito says. While stun guns were not in existence at the end of the 18th century, 18th century is when 1791, Second Amendment was created, right? While stun guns were not in existence at the end of the 18th century, the same is true for weapons most commonly used today for self-defense, namely revolvers and semi-automatic pistols. Now, I am not a super duper gun expert like a lot of you out there. Okay, I'm not a gunsmith. Um, you know, I'm not going to film myself shooting guns. You're not going to want to watch that, although I'm probably okay, but not like you guys out there watching this. But again, I can tell you that here is Justice Alito talking about semi-automatic pistols being protected. Even though they weren't invented to the end of the 19th century, semi-automatic pistols are protected under the Second Amendment. And what is one of the essential components of a semi-automatic pistol? Well, there's things like triggers, probably sights, ammunition, and of course, magazines. Semi-automatic pistol discussed expressly in Caetano versus Massachusetts in concurrence by Justice Alito. And last but not least, I want to draw a distinction that the anti-gunners uh, are arguably making, and I think the state of California is making, which is Bruin talks about self-defense. Therefore, the Second Amendment only protects self-defense, not all lawful purposes. Therefore, you, the pro-Second Amendment community, have to show that you use these magazines that hold more than 10 rounds for self-defense because Bruin suggests that that's what Bruin says. Well, here's the thing. Why do you think Bruin was talking about self-defense in the context of the Second Amendment? Do you think that was random? Do you think it's because they wanted to limit the Second Amendment to self-defense, which of course would be fine in, in one sense because possessing firearms for self-defense is perfectly lawful purpose, among other things. But no, do you know why Bruin focused on self-defense? Here's why. Guess what? The plaintiffs that sued the state of New York in Nicerpa versus Bruin, Koch and Nash, what was their case about? What were they seeking to do? What did they ask the Supreme Court specifically for? They wanted to be able to carry handguns in New York State for the purpose, the express purpose of self-defense. Here's the language from Nicerpa versus Bruin, the Supreme Court. It says, nor does any party dispute that handguns are weapons in common use today for self-defense. We therefore turn, and this is the key, we turn to whether the plain text of the Second Amendment protects Koch's and Nash's proposed course of conduct. Proposed course of conduct by Nash and Koch is what? Quote, Carrying handguns publicly for self-defense, close quote. The point is, the reason why Bruin is focused on handguns commonly owned for self-defense is because the whole Bruin case was about whether or not Coke and Nash re request for relief, which is to be able to carry guns publicly for self-defense. That's why they talked about self-defense, because that was the specific issue presented in Nicerpa versus Bruin. It's not like a term paper or a book or a, a you know or, or an encyclopedia entry on like guns or the Second Amendment. No, they're writing a, a, an opinion involving a specific dispute between these two individuals and the state of New York. They wanted to be able to carry a gun for self-defense, and therefore the Supreme Court wrote an opinion focused on whether or not they have the Second Amendment right to carry handguns publicly for self-defense. That's why Bruin is talking about self-defense in the context of the Second Amendment, not because it's limited, not because the Second Amendment is limited to using guns in self-defense. It's because that was the specific issue presented by the plaintiffs in Nicerpa versus Bruin. So, okay, uh, well, I hope you learn a little bit more about uh, what California is trying to do in Duncan versus Bonta. I don't think it's going to work. I think they're going to get spanked, but only time will tell. We'll see what happens. Uh, again, thanks for coming to the Four Boxes Diner. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, and we'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.